First part, the first main reaction you're going to deal with in chapter 19 is called the aldol reaction. All right, and the aldol reaction will involve Well, if we look at the pieces of the name, al, aldehyde, all, alcohol. Now, this isn't really the alcohol they're referring to. This is actually talking about the final product that's made. But let's consider for a second what would happen. Well, kind of like what we were, like what we were talking about before, I have a carbonyl in the presence of a good base, OH-. And the OH- could attack the carbonyl, but if that swung out, the only thing that could be kicked out would be the OH again, because hydrogens and carbons are not good leaving groups. Which means even if it does make, even if it does attack there, nothing will happen. It's only going to make the enolate as a new intermediate. And so it'll pull off that hydrogen and you'll form your enolate, O minus. And then I have hydrogen in there, okay? Now here's one key point to always take note of. They only gave us one reactant and then a base, right? So we got this enolate. What do we do next? Generally, if they only give you one reactant, but you see a setup like this, where it's one reactant and a base that you know forms the enolate, what ends up happening is this enolate that you formed attacks another molecule of what you started with, because we always assume there's a ton of excess of this and excess of this, and unless they only tell you there's one, one molecular equivalent or one mole of some reactant, you always assume it's going to react with whatever's floating around originally. Which means my next step is to Take that enolate that I formed in the very first step, the hydrogen, and have this attack one of these. So let's draw that out. Double bond O, methyl, hydrogen. Now we saw before, enolates always attack with the carbon, not the oxygen that's negative, because what that oxygen does is it wants to reform its double bond. So this goes down, and now this is going to go out and attack something. And we always said it attacks a carbon with some partial or full positive charge. We saw before that oxygen-carbon double bonds like to resonate up to that oxygen, giving you O minus carbon positive. So we know that the enolate will always go and attack the carbon of another carbonyl in this case. And so you'd be left with this, an O minus, Sorry, not O minus, O double bond to, and now this, O minus. If I were to number my carbons to keep track of them, this is carbon one, two, three, and four. So carbon two is the one that made the bond out to things. Carbon one is the one that reformed its double bond O. Carbon three had the oxygen that got attacked, and that swung up, so it became the O minus. And then carbon four is just along for the ride. Now typically we have this in some, we have this in a base, but there's always going to be a proton source. In your very first step, we made water, right? This OH grabbed a hydrogen and became H2O, which means at the end of this reaction, there's some H2O floating around, which this O minus can deprotonate and become the final product, which would be this. OH with four carbons. Okay, and this is where the name aldol comes from because one, I have an aldehyde. This carbonyl right here is an aldehyde, all alcohol over here. And one thing to point out, because this will be important later on, is the positions of these groups will always be one, two, three. Carbonyl on one, alpha carbon on two, OH carbon on three. This will be a trend that I'm going to point out in a second why it's so important. But the net result of any aldol should be one carbonyl and one OH group left over at the end. Now there's one other thing that the aldol reactions can do that adds an extra step. And that's if they give you the word heat. If you ever see the word heat and you're dealing with an aldol reaction, you have to consider something called condensation. So the next thing I want to talk about is something called condensation. And this has to do with this one, two, three setup that I was talking about. So what happens when I have heat here? Well, you have to remember, we always have this OH- floating around. And that OH- is going to look to pull off acidic protons. <clears throat> now, yes, the hydrogen of this OH is fairly acidic. But let's assume 
for our purposes that it's not the hydrogen we're gonna pull off. Yes, it can get pulled off, and yes, it can get put back on, but eventually, eventually it's going to hit this hydrogen over here. That OH minus is gonna grab one of your alpha hydrogens on carbon two. And that OH minus will come in, grab that hydrogen, and now here's the dip. here's what's special about the condensation reaction. And this only happens if you've done an aldol condensation and you see the word heat. What heat does is it drives the formation of double bonds. It does elimination reactions. And what happens is rather than the hydrogen going to form the enolate like we've done before, what's going to happen is that hydrogen carbon bond is going to swim down to the bond between two and three, forming a carbon-carbon double bond, and the OH will be kicked out in the process. Now, we for the longest time said OH minus is a terrible leavinger. Well, we kind of lied to you because there's always an exception when it comes to orgo, as it seems. This is the one exception to that rule where OH minus is the leaving group. The OH minus gets kicked out and you're left with a carbon-carbon double bond between two and three. Okay? And that is what's called the that is what is known as the aldol condensation reaction. 